Good morning. And once again, welcome to our reflection for the day. I am Sylvia and I am on the ministry team at Holy Trinity in St Michael's. The reading for today is from Romans and although the language is a little bit convoluted, the ideas, the theology if you want the posh word for it, is dynamite. I have compared the translation of the NIV with that of the, the message and although the NIV is more familiar, the message packs a punch that makes it very real. So it's the message that I'm going to read today. So here goes, Romans chapter 5. By entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with him, make us fit for him, we have it all together with God because of our master, Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we are hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we are never left feeling shortchanged. On the contrary, we can't round up enough co containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't, and he doesn't, wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worthy di worth dying for, and we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatever to him. Now we are set right with God by means of his sacrifice, sacrificial death, the consummate blood sacrifice. There's no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God by the sacrificial death of his son. Now that we are at our best, just think how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plodding prose. We sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus, the Messiah. I think most of us have been brought up with the false understanding that we can work our way into heaven. If only I had be become a better person, then God will like me. If only I give more to charity, then God will think I'm okay. If only I go to church on Sunday, then I'm guaranteed a place in eternity. But nowhere does it say in the gospel that God expects us to reach perfection before he will accept us. Remember the prodigal son when he came home after living the life of Riley and ending up in the gutter. It was the father that came running to meet him on the road not giving his son a moment to even say sorry. 
Remember the lost sheep of the parable, who had wandered off on his own doing his own thing, and the shepherd leaves the well-behaved 99 sheep in the sheep pen and goes off to find the one that has strayed. No recrimination. The sheep even gets a ride on the shoulders of the shepherd home to safety. Not only do we not have to be perfect, we don't we also don't have to belong to the right set of people to be part of the community, to receive the love of God. Remember the Good Samaritan? He went the extra mile to save the life and health of someone he'd been taught to despise. There's a lovely phrase in this reading that's from Romans. We throw open our doors to God and discover at that same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. This reminds us that it is God that loves us first and we respond to that lo love, not the other way around. It isn't us that finds God, it is God that finds us. It's too easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we do all the work in our relationship with God, that if we try harder, we will succeed. That's the way the world looks at things. If we study hard at school, we'll get a good job. If we practice hard at playing the piano, we'll be able to play in public without looking foolish, which is something I've never accomplished. If we try really, really hard, we will love our neighbour. If we contort our minds and hearts into the right shape, we'll be able to forgive our enemies. But that's all the wrong way round. If we open the door to God, we will find that he has already opened the door to us. If we want to succeed at forgiving others, because Jesus tells us to in the Lord's Prayer, all the effort we put in will do us not a bit of good unless we ask God to change us from the inside out and inspire us to think like him. Without God's input, we will fail miserably. The same can be said about loving our neighbour. Without allowing God to work in our lives to transform our preconceived ideas then our neighbourly love will be superficial and just politeness when it needs to be gut-wrenching desire for the very best for those around us. Another phrase is also glorious. We are never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up, round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Christ arrives right on time to make it happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. Do you have the feeling of wow when you hear this? Jesus didn't wait until we were perfect to come to earth and give himself as a sacrifice. On the contrary, Jesus came to Jerusalem to die for us when we were at our worst and totally unworthy. And the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost gives us so much that we can't keep it all to ourselves. We have to give it away through service to those around us, through service to those whom God also loves. Loving Father, thank you for allowing Jesus to come into the world when we were not worth saving and gave himself for us. We pray for the grace to realise that we cannot change ourselves or the world around us without your Holy Spirit at work in us, drawing us ever closer to the Father and inspiring us with his love. Amen. I hope you have a good week. Keep safe. Keep well. Goodbye for now.